in this course we must see uh, some basic basic aspects of on polymers we have to know certain basic concepts last day i told you in general some aspects on material science general materials i mentioned there are three major members in the family of materials of which the polymer is one of them now I have already defined what is a polymer. Now, from here you can see polymer in this word, if you divide this word, break these words into two parts poly and many. Poly means many and mar means units. In contrast to discrete molecules, Polymers are composed of macromolecules of very high molecular weight formed by the repeated union of small molecules known as monomer. <coughs> by virtue of their very high molecular weight, there is a large difference in properties between monomers and polymers or that to discrete molecules and polymers. <coughs> you will gradually come to know how, how much is the difference and by virtue of their macroness, these polymers have certain unique properties which have placed them top of other materials and we will gradually realize. Now, what are these unique features of polymers, polymer materials over other materials say metals and ceramics. The first and foremost point is, it is very light material. Say, we, if we want to manufacture some space vehicle or aircraft, the load is a is an important criteria in order to save fuel and better flight efficiency. We must reduce the weight of the vehicle. If we take metals, you know the specific gravity of metal is very high, so the weight of the vehicle will be very high. Sometimes we cannot escape, we have to use some material metal, but uh, effort has been given to replace this, that metal by polymers. Talking about ceramics, yes there are certain special cases to be used at elevated temperature, the ceramics uh, cannot be avoided, ceramic materials cannot be avoided, still then polymer materials have been developed in such a way, so that these polymers can also provide a resistance to very high temperature, we will gradually see those things. So, the most important point is weight, that means the polymer should be very light, specific gravity should be very low and in fact, these polymers are really very light. If you look into the specific gravity of polymers, say think of commodity polymers which we use every day. What are commodity polymers? Say think of polyethylene, say carry bag films. Hmm? Without carry bag films, today we cannot think of any. If we go to market, we ask for some commodity, the shopkeeper gives the material in a thin film packet. So, that those are carry bags made of low density polyethylene. Think of uh, where insulation and covering that is made of polyvinyl chloride. Think of certain toys made of polystyrene, lightweight as well as very cheap. Not only that, for packaging materials, packaging in the packaging field, uh, these polymers are also uh, highly used. So, these are the materials known as commodity polymers and they are very light. For example, the density of polyethylene may lie between say 0 0.94, 0 0.94 to 0 0.98 less than 1, specific gravity is less than 1. And to talk about another polymer that is polypropylene, it is the light, lightest of all these polymers, the density of or a specific gravity of polypropylene is around 0 0.92 to 0 0.93. So, this way we can make these 
materials will be lighter and lighter like this and we can remove uh, replace metals and ceramics in many useful applications. So, that is the very light in weight, we will gradually see large number of examples of these polymers. I am not uh, going to crowded, uh, crowd this uh, points with the examples of polymers, we will gradually see and time to time I will refer back there. Then excellent strength properties, only the material uh, lightweight in material is not sufficient enough, they must bear load they must have adequate load bearing capacity, they must be mechanically strong, tensile strength, tensile modulus should be very high, they should not be brittle, they should be tough material, it should not break and sometimes we need some elongation properties also. So, in general we can say these polymers can provide. In fact, these are providing very excellent strength properties. Then unique flexibility, these polymer materials are flexible. You can bend a polymer item because it is flexible. Now, you have to correlate this flexibility with the structure, configuration etcetera, how it becomes flexible will gradually see because it is the that I was telling it is the molecular uh, bonding in material it is the bond what kind of bond is there those bonds are flexible say carbon carbon bond you know it is a flexible one carbon carbon single bond is a flexible it can rotate you can bend it like that uh, it, it can undergo bending flexing etc that is why that is actually uh, available in these polymers very high specific strength. What is specific strength? What is specific strength? Specific strength is the strength ratio of the strength to specific gravity of the material. That means, we are having a material which is strong as well as it is light. You think of steel, tensile strength is very high. Divide that tensile strength or tensile modulus or compression modulus by its specific gravity, you will get some value. Now, you take one polymer sample, say even a natural fiber, for example, say jute fiber its tensile strength is suppose 450 mega Pascal, its density is around 1 to 1.1 to 1.2 like that. So, polymers still lower density. So, the, since the density is low, specific strength is very high. Now, this is a material, this is a property, this is a property which is very much essential today in today's uh, civilization, in civilized applications, we can get very high strength, but light. Today vehicles are, say automobile vehicles are sort of fully green composite. What is green composite? Made of a polymer. reinforced with a natural fiber. So, it may be natural fiber, it may be synthetic fiber, if that fiber is used as a reinforcement, dispersed in a matrix, polymer matrix known, known as polymer resin, we will get a product known as FRP fiber reinforced plastic. This is light as well as strong with high impact strength. If a vehicle hits some object or if a vehicle collides with another vehicle, 
the passenger inside the vehicle will remain safe if that impact energy can be absorbed by the vehicle that is not possible with metal that metal can shatter and just pierce the passenger like the sword whereas if this composite is light as well as it can withstand very high impact properties it will not break in that fashion so that passenger inside the vehicle will remain safe even if the accident is very severe so these are the advantages so very high specific strength this property we should not forget then easy processability and manufacturing to any shape what do we mean by easy processability now in our country or in uh, in uh, worldwide there are many polymer manufacturing industries they manufacture some polymer materials say b it's polyethylene b it's polypropylene it's nylon polycarbonate some rubber those are manufactured by chemical reaction in in chemical reactor and we get basic raw polymeric material known as virgin polymeric material but that virgin polymeric material is not usable is not useful until and unless we go through certain processes and include some functional additives inside this polymer before uh, obtaining the final product so the a product is a mixture of polymer with functional additives now in order to get this thing mixture of functional additives with the polymer we have to pass through certain procedures processes what are those processes first of all you have to make a mixture a blend of these polymers with the additives all right after making the blend a compound is formed that is called a polymer compound we will cover in the subsequent lectures those things what is polymer compounding what are additives what are functional additives what are their functions we will cover gradually but before that just i am referring in connection with this thing that needs a for needs the formation of a polymer compound known as compounding once the polymer compound is formed then that polymer compound is passed through certain machineries through another subsequent st uh, stages of processing to give a final shape to the product that is known as fabrication so we have to go through processing and fabrication steps which involve high shear force as well as elevated temperature you understand so those processing machineries are say an internal mixture or a polymer blender or a two roll mill for making the polymer compound or a polymer kneader to make a polymer compound after the polymer compound is obtained prepared then that polymer compound is subjected to extrusion injection molding calendaring compression molding thermoforming so various processing techniques are there we will also mention those things in subsequent lectures various different processing techniques and while going through these processes these polymers can be easily softened easily processed 
it can say for example, preparation of a polymer compound. First of all, the polymer needs, needs to be softened by application of heat and some shear force. Until and unless it is softened, you cannot incorporate the functional additives in the form of particle, in the form of fiber and after incorporation, it's, it needs to be dispersed. So, that softening is very easy in case of polymer as compared to metals and ceramics. Huh? It is known to you. That is why it is known as easy processability. Not only that, there are certain proce your production devices which can be made through solution processing technique because these polymers are easily soluble in suitable solvents. Even there are certain polymers which goes easily into water. You can have water soluble polymers, for example, polyvinyl alcohol or natural gums these are soluble in water and some other polymers which are not soluble in water, but organic solvents are available in which it dissolve and we get a polymer solution. Once we get a polymer solution, we can utilize that polymer solution for making a product. Suppose you want to make a film, we can utilize that polymer solution in order to form that film. Is it all right? So, we can easily say or we can very well say that is it these mat polymer materials are easy, uh, easily processable and it can be products can be easily manufactured of any shape <coughs> which is not so easy shaping by uh, shaping uh, in case of metals and ceramics it, that needs sophisticated sorry that needs uh, very high temperature, hmm? huge installation of machineries. For example, you take one example of footwear or even you take the example of this pen or this pen. These are made by injection molding process or you think of bucket, mugs, bowls, any type of thing where we need large enough, need to produce large number of items in a short period of time. So, we can have one injection molding which is connected to a molding assembly or shaping assembly where large number of small molds of this pain or bucket all those things are there. So, in one sort of injection, what is injection? You, have, you know, you think of hypodermic syringe, a hypodermic th syringe, how the medicine or fluid is injected uh, uh, into the body this the principle is almost same. So, in one injection you can fill the mold with molten polymer then by cooling the mold you can open after cooling the mold you open the mold you will get many number of say, say 32 for example, in one shot you can get 32 items in footwear industries if you go you will see and that is fully automated fully automated, no manpower is there. You just start the process, it continuously and one cycle of this uh, manufacture your uh, molding might be say 2, two 3 minutes. Now, you think of the volume production, large number of production of those small units by injection molding. So, it, it is not so easy for any products made of ceramics and metals. That is why we can say these polymers are uh, easily processable and manufacture, manufacturable and we can give uh, any shape as we like. Next important point comes is tailorability. What is tailorability? You know who is a tailor, the role of a tailor, what a tailor does, what a tailor does? He cuts the cloth according to the shape, dimension in order to fit you that is called tailorability. Now, why we call this polymer a 
very good tailoring material. I give you a simple example. I give you a simple example. Say you have in your hand say polyethylene, a polymer material, polyethylene. You want to make a fiber. Yes, you can do. Polyethylene is hydrophobic in nature. You want to make it hydrophilic. Yes, you can do by chemical modification. So, by doing some physical and chemical modification on a base polymer, you can get another polymer. That means, you can develop a new set of properties on a polymer having already existing with existing another set of properties. So, your existing material has got a set of properties. Now, you can broaden the properties, even you can improve the properties. This is this kind of facility is not available in other materials, we can tailor it. Now, since I have told you this example of polyethylene, now polyethylene is termed as a plastic material. Polypropylene this is also a plastic material. Suppose you have these two polymers polyethylene and polypropylene you need a rubber. Plastic is not like that of rubber that is a different kind of material having different set of properties. If you want to make a rubber what you have to do? You can say, sir, we can make a blend of polyethylene and polypropylene. You will get a new product, sure, of course, you will get a new product, but that new product will have different set of properties, but that may not be rubber. But you can develop a rubber from these two materials. How? For that, you have to go for, you have to start, uh, go uh, to its uh, monomeric stage. You take ethylene. along with propylene polymerize together polymerize together by applying suitable conditions of temperature pressure catalyst you will get a new product that is a copolymer of ethylene and propylene known as EPR, ethylene propylene rubber that is a rubber. The properties of this EPR is totally different from the polyethylene and polypropylene. <coughs> so, you got a new material from ethylene, polyethylene and polypropylene. So, this is a kind of tailoring technique. There are plenty, there are plenty. If you see, if you keep your eyes and ear open, you will find that any of the polymers you come across that can be tailored to have new set of properties or you can broaden the properties, you can broaden the properties means you can have a broad spectrum of properties as well as you can increase the level of properties both the things you can do. Then corrosion resistant we fulfill our demand utilizing the available materials say metals now metals are not resistant to corrosion in order to prevent corrosion of metals we take the help of polymer by applying a coating of polymer over this thing, so that this electrolytes cannot get access to the metal surface in order to set electrochemical reaction which occurs in corrosion process. So, this is not that uh, corrodable, but it degrades also 
that is a different aspect. The polymer degrades in other through other mechanism, but metal degrades through corrosion. Then external durability, it is stable. We can we can have the stability properties at very towards uh, to very high temperature. Say those are known as thermo resistant. Sometimes we call high performance polymer. This uh, thermo resistant polymer or thermally resistant polymer mm, can be considered as high performance polymer. Then next point comes with biodegradability. What is this biodegradability? What do you mean by that? What is the necessity of that? Compatibility with natural materials. Compatibility? Uh, it is not like uh, that. Ideally, it means so that it will not accumulate in the environment like yeah. So. yeah. Now, I give you the let me give you the background. Till 1980s, of the last century, scientists were in a motive to develop more and more stable polymers. Uh, how much we can make it stable? To what extent we can make it stable? It should not degrade by environmental agencies like heat, light, um, mechanical impact it should be stable for long time. Now, when this consumption of polymers is gradually increasing day by day, we find that after the use of the polymer, when the use of the polymer is over, what we do? We throw it away. Where, where to throw? Where to throw? Useless. It becomes useless. When it becomes useless, we have to throw it. Now, once we throw it to the environment, since these are synthetic materials made of carbon, 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 hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen bonds, which are the most stable bonds, does not break. So, it gets piled up in the environment, causing nuisance, causing pollution. There is a lot of human cry, and the entire world, they very much care about this plastics, polymers, how to dispose is there is a great disposal problem with these polymers. This thing was not thought of till 1980s by the scientists. Then people started realizing when these problems started coming, coming, no, this is not the proper thing probably. We have to think of some biodegradable polymers, biodegradable materials. After our use, we can throw it to the environment, environment will, environment will take care of its disposal, gradually it will consume without affecting the uh, environment. It will maintain the eco-friendliness of the environment and that is not so easy job. Okay. For that of course, some biodegradable polymers have been thought of. How? What is, what do we mean by biodegradation? That means, degradation by bioorganisms, microorganisms. That means, these polymers should be considered as their food, food for the microorganisms, they can eat away. Say, think of this naturally occurring material say wood produced by nature or woody materials or plant materials, if it is just kept or e exposed to the outdoor environment, uh, it is eaten away by microorganisms, say bacteria, fungi, all these things. Now, how they, they actually degrade? Because you have to go a little inside, you have to go a little inside into the chemical structure, chemical formula, functional groups, 
actually those are attacked by those microbes producing certain enzymes, those enzymes, enzymes catalyze this process, this way we get the biodegradation and we get the, bio, uh, the this material consumed by the nature. So, that is if required we can introduce mimicking the nature such type of functional groups in the polymer. So, the polymer will be biodegradable as well as it is, it is strong, as well as it is, it is uh, stable and um, flexible flexible as well as uh, it is light. So, maintaining all those properties after our use if this can be taken care of by the um, nature and that is uh, nothing uh, parallel to it. So, we can think of this biodegradable polymers adaptability it should be this, these are uh, related or relevant things Adap it should be easily adapted by the environment. You think of this car today you see many of us are using car in India. It was not the situation 10 years back. Then after 5 years a new model has come. So, I, I like to sell it off or dispose it off after that I will buy a new model. <laughs> Where this will be disposed? Who will take it? He will say no sir I will not take your car because that is old. I will go for a the uh, uh, modern uh, uh, recent model is not it. So, why to throw it, why to dump? The people, the human being they do not have space to live. Uh? You are living in two tire, three tire. Uh? Now, in your hostel how you are living in one room instead of one person, two person, three persons are living. So, there is no space to space for, for li uh, living space for the humans. Then uh, where is the space for keeping all these vehicles? So, the necessity of biodegradation comes. So, who will think the responsibility is lying on you? Our days are over. Our days are over, we are dying. But you are the persons on which we like to uh, transfer the responsibility to think of biodegradable materials that to biodegradable polymers, which will be strong as well as stable, as well as durable, as well as easily processable, tolerable, all these things. So, this biodegradability, biodegradable polymers, this this is supposed to come in a very bigger way. Tailorability means it is a means of or way of modifying the existing polymer to suit our application or to develop certain properties so that I can get it. Suppose, I need a flame resistant, fire resistant polymer, I do not have, I do not have that polymer. So, but I need this fire resistance property, I can develop it. How? Okay, you halogenate the surface or you add some fire resistant or flame resistant additive, yes, you will get a product which is fire resistant, that is a tailorability. As I told, this ethylene propylene copolymer it is a rubbery material, I do not have a rubber. You think of, uh, if you go back to history, I, I am not very good in history. Somehow I passed in my school uh, examination history, but during second world war time, what happened to Germany, United States of America, they stopped supply of natural rubber to Germany. What they will do? They need rubber, they need rubber for uh, uh, your making tires. When this was stopped, they did not just uh, remain idle. Within a year time, they developed synthetic rubber industry, Buna rubber, star in between rubber industry. They developed synthetic rubber, before that it was not there. So, it actually came in the uh, say within uh, 44 to 45, 1945 that time. So, that is a tailorability. Natural labor, we do not have natural labor, do not worry. Supply is stopped, do not worry. Defense people is here, they know. If the something is not available, fine. Let me think of, I have to get out of this problem. How to get out of the problem? Now, you are a human being, you can think of, you can get out of the problem. That is tailorability, you have to tailor. So, here ethylene and propylene, copolymerize you will get a material that is a rubbery material. We have polystyrene, 
we have styrene, we have butadiene. Okay. So, make a copolymer of styrene and butadiene that is a rubbery material rubber and that is a substitute of natural rubber. And also natural rubber the chemical constituent of natural rubber you will see that is 1, 4. Sorry, isoprene. 1, 4, 6 polyisoprene. This is a chemical constituent of natural rubber 1, 4, 6 polyisoprene synthesized by nature, but this can be synthetically made in industry, in polymerization reactor. So, this is a tolerability, clear, cost effectiveness, cheap material. We can get 1 kg of this plastic say a polymer say for example, in 60 to 70 rupees earlier it was less than 40 rupees because of inflation today it is 70, 75 like this cheap material. You can say sir metals can be available even less than uh, 70 rupees fine, but you think of a product you can make how many pieces out of 1 kg polymer and out of 1 kg ceramic or 1 kg metal, you will get more number of items from this polymer. So, it is cost effective. Then in order to know the science and technology of polymers, gradually we will go deeper and deeper this way, you have to know the structure and features of polymers, because you are the scientist. Today there are certain existing polymers, but we should not remain satisfied with the existing polymers. We have to develop newer and newer polymers. Probably you have uh, read yesterday's Telegraph newspaper. Have you read? Hmm? Yeah, there is a report. Professor C N C N R Rao is a national scientist, emeritus scientist at uh, Bangalore, he said that there are two forms of carbon, two forms of carbon in the form of diamond and nano carbon like that, that can be deposited on polyphenol alcohol on deposition of this polyphenol alcohol very small, very uh, small dimension few billionth of a meter. So, that forms a composite, nano composite, strong, he is claiming strong and tough, 500 MPa, huh? 500 MPa. 500 MPa. he is telling, claiming. So, we have to know the structure, we have to know the chemical formula, we have to know the structure, we have to know the molecule, we have to, we have to recognize the molecule. So, the structural features, sir, you please look into this point, length of the polymer molecule, length means length of the polymer molecule, diameter of the polymer molecule. You think of, imagine some isolated polymer molecule, say polyethylene, like a string or a thread, a line like structure configuration how long it is, what is the diameter, then length to diameter ratio, <coughs> L by D ratio, you can calculate the length of a polyethylene molecule. Just I am giving you some input, you take the bond distance between carbon and carbon, it is 1.54 angstrom and a bond angle. Suppose, a fully extended polyethylene molecule look like this, 
here is one C, here is one C, one C, 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 like this. This is the basics of basic aspect of polymer molecule, isolated polymer molecule. So, it continues, it continues, okay, and hydrogens are there. Hmm? I am not showing the hydrogens. Now, th what is this angle? You know, 109. So, if you know this bond length 1.54 angstrom and this angle, you can find out the length between one end to the other end. Can you not calculate? If you know that how many the C C units are there. You can calculate. Suppose there are 1000 units, C C units are there. You can calculate. So, you take this as a home task for calculation of this length of this polymer chain. Then this dimension you can also calculate. Hmm? A simple geometry. A simple geometry you can also calculate. So, this is the diameter of a polymer molecule, this is the length of a polymer molecule. Now, this length and diameter of a polymer molecule exerts havoc influence on the properties of a product made of that polymer. Clear? Then we have to know the molecular formula. What is the molecular formula? Chemical formula. From the chemical formula, we could know that it contains carbon, hydrogen, or nitrogen, or oxygen, or sulfur, or phosphorus, like this. Say, if you think of ethylene, polyethylene, it contains carbon and hydrogen. So, you can say very easily that it is a hydrocarbon material, it is a hydrocarbon material and if we think of another polymer say like this having carbon, hydrogen, oxygen hmm, and the polymer I am not writing the whole molecule. So, these R and uh, sorry R and R prime R and R prime contains carbon hydrogen, this contains nitrogen linked to carbon, nitrogen linked to carbon, one oxygen is attached to this carbon by double bond and one hydrogen is there. So, we can know what are the atoms present. We know the from the periodic table where they are placed, we can know the difference in electronegativity of the atoms and that has influence on the properties of the molecule. So, molecular formula we know then repeat unit. What is repeat unit? Now, I in the definition of the polymer I showed that this unit is repeated many number of times, n number of times along the molecular chain, along the backbone of the molecule that is known as repeat unit. And this n is actually known as degree of polymerization or d p degree of polymerization. So, if I know the value of n, then I can easily calculate the molecular weight of this polymer. Suppose, for n is equal to say 5000, the 
from the mass of this atom of carbon and hydrogen you can write it is 28 into 5000 So, this is 1 lakh or 140 kilo Dalton molecular weight. So, this is the repeating it, it is repeating along the backbone chain repeating it. Then functional group, now there is no functional group like that as we know functional group we mean say a carboxyl group. I mean say a group like this or you can write this way attached to polymer backbone chain. Now, there you saw that it can have this is the functional group carboxyl group attached to the polymer. Now, other functional groups might be O H, other functional group might be uh, other functional group might be ether, other functional group might be halogen. other functional group might be this so on and so forth. So, these are functional groups, you must know these functional groups. Functional groups mean definitely they have certain functions to play remaining present in the polymer molecule when that molecule is used for making a product that product in that product these functional groups will play certain roles this one kind of thing. Another thing you see, say what is this molecule? Polyacetylene. Now, this is a pi electron bond that means entire chain will have a cloud delocalized pi electron cloud which is extended along the chain. So, it can have some pi extended pi electron structure that is also one kind of functionality that means this molecule in the center there is carbon chain, carbon skeleton. Like this continues. Huh? Surrounding this carbon skeleton, like a thread, it can have a cylinder of like a solenoid. That means this is pi electron cloud pi electron surrounding this thing. Then that means, this carbon skeleton remains within the center of this electron cylinder. It will behave like a conductor. It is behave like a conductor conducting polymer. It has come in a very big way in semiconductor industry because it is processable. So, this is one example of polyacetylene, you can know polyaniline, polypyrrole, polythiophene like this. So, these are the then, so functional groups, functional group means definitely those groups have certain functions to play, that is a functional group. Then molecular configuration in solution and melt, molecular configuration I melt, I mean that 
you, you have to in order to know the science you have to think of an isolated molecule. Suppose if you remain in one room in a big room if you live in a big room your behavior activities will be of one kind and if you are put along with few tigers your behavior will be another kind. If you are kept in one room with very good friends another kind or odd friends will be another kind. So, that means your surroundings. So, that surroundings how it the configuration that means the geometry configuration what is the geometry. Now, think of a movie house very serious movie is going on you have just watching that serious movie you are sitting in a very attention position. Hmm? You forgot that there are many people in the audience your auditorium you are just watching that movie that is one kind of configuration. Now, if you do not like that movie then you will try to stretch your legs and hands and something like that. Sometimes you sit this way that way and you will stand and this way uh, and you will be probably those you may not like that film, but your uh, person uh, sitting in your backside he might be liking that film. So, you are disturbing him say so he will cause on you oh what you are doing to please get out of this auditorium like that. So, this is the configuration. So, this kind of molecular configuration how it the geometric disposition of the molecule its segments etcetera etcetera in solution and in melt kinetic energy kinetic situation dynamic situation then when it is frozen it becomes solid. So, configuration in solid state what will be the configuration in solid state. Okay. Now, if a material it just frozen from its solution or melt what happens it will be set in position, but if it is annealed or slowly it is allowed to configure then the organization of the molecule will be of different kind molecular organization morphology in solid state. We can have amorphous morphology we can have crystalline morphology like that. Here are few examples of polymers, these are few only, we will come across large number of examples and the easy way to remember the formula, repeat unit formula of this polymers, we start with this ethylene molecule, ethylene molecule, not this is not ethylene molecule, it is a derivative, ethylene molecule, start with ethylene molecule, CH2, CH2. You can substitute one hydrogen atom by one functional group, two hydrogen atoms by two functional groups or the same functional group or all the functional groups, all the hydrogen atoms by different functional groups. Say you can graduate, you can get easily a polymer. What is this? Teflon. This teflon, tetra poly tetrafluoroethylene teflon. So, it is easy to remember. Polyvinyl chloride? this one quite it is easy to remember. So, you have to make practice hmm? look at the formulas you see there is nothing to discuss these things actually I could not I did not have time to give proper um, arrangement of these groups uh, through certain software uh, that can be, but I will show you here and little by degree of polymer molecule is very high. So, now, today I shall not start this one next I shall start from next day onwards I will try to go little faster. Okay. Thank you very much.